You're lying to yourself right now, this morning, yesterday, basically all day long. And the worst part? You don't even realize it's happening. Sometimes other people are actively steering your mind exactly where they want it to go. You get patterns wrong. You get numbers wrong. You get prices and values completely backwards. And here's the thing. It's not actually your fault, right? Wrong. It's why 40,320 is somehow greater than 40,320. Wait, what? I've got two very simple math problems here. They're sitting under these papers labeled A and B. Choose one. Right now. Do you want to solve A or B? Okay. You've chosen. Here's the deal. When I show you these problems, you'll have exactly five seconds to solve the one you picked. And if you don't have enough time to solve it completely, just estimate the answer. Ready? Go. Time's up. Let's be honest. Virtually no one solved those multiplication problems fast enough. But what about your estimates? Here's what's interesting. One times, two times, three times, four times, five times, six times, seven times, eight. And eight times, seven times, six times, five times, four times, three times, two times, one are the exact same problem. You remember the commutative property from school, right? A times B equals B times A. It doesn't matter what order you multiply the terms in. But here's where things get weird. In 1974, psychologists Amos Tversky and Daniel Kahneman published an article called Judgment Under Uncertainty, Heuristics and Biases. They ran exactly this experiment. The group who tried to solve problem A, multiplying with the small numbers first, had a median estimate of 512. Group B, who started by multiplying larger descending numbers, their median estimate was 2,250, over four times higher than group A. Just because the order of the numbers was different. That seems weird, right? Nope. That's completely normal. We do this all the time and just don't know it. Oh, also, the actual answer to this problem is, as you may have guessed, 40,320. So both groups were way off each other and way, way off the truth. Here's what's happening. Whether you started with big numbers or small numbers, you were anchored into a mode of thought that depended on your initial information. Anchoring is a cognitive bias that basically sets the tone for how you think about something, and it can be really tough to break out of it or consider other relevant factors. Let me give you a real-world example. You walk into a coffee shop. A latte costs $5.50. That's expensive. You think, coffee used to be like a dollar. But here's what's actually happening. You're anchored to a price from a decades ago. In 1995, a Starbucks tall latte cost $2.45. Adjusted for inflation, that's $4.90 in today's money. So that 550 latte is only about 12% more expensive than it was 30 years ago. Not the highway robbery your brain is screaming about. That 1995 latte was made by one barista using an espresso machine. Today, your barista is competing with mobile orders, managing a drive through customizing 17 different milk options, and somehow remembering that you want exactly two pumps of vanilla, not three. The labor is harder. The expectations are higher. The service is faster. Yet we're all stuck anchoring to $1 coffee from some mythical past that, if we're honest, was probably just bad diner coffee in a styrofoam cup. Anchoring happens with movies too. How a movie opens and ends has a stronger influence on what you think of the entire film. Have you ever heard someone say, yeah, the beginning and end of that movie were terrible, but the middle was really good? No, you haven't, because that's not how our brains work. Let's try another experiment. Massimo Piatelli Palmarini flipped a coin seven times. The outcome was one of these three sequences. Sequence one, heads, 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 tails, tails, tails. Sequence two, tails, heads, heads, tails, heads, tails, tails. Sequence three, tails, 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 tails. Here's the question. Which one was most likely to be the real outcome? Let's say you had to bet on it. It costs you $10 if you're wrong, and you win $30 if you're right. When a group was polled, the top choice was sequence two, followed by sequence one, and then sequence three, for all the wrong reasons. The probabilities of all three sequences are exactly the same, because each coin flip is an independent event with 50-50 odds of heads or tails. Seven tails in a row is just as likely to occur as the mix of T's and H's in the second series. But since we're anchored into thinking there's typically an alternating mix of heads and tails in a sequence of seven coin tosses, we wrongly believe it's actually more likely. We're wrong. Let's see another example. Four sides of this die are green, and the other two sides are red. Same betting terms as the coin flip game. Lose $10 if you're wrong, win $30 if you're right. Which outcome is more likely? Sequence 1. 
Red, green, red, red, red. Sequence two. Green, red, green, red, red, red. Sequence three. Red, 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 red. When people were polled, choice preferences went two, one, and three. And that is weird. None of the three sequences are that common because they're so red heavy. And red is only two of the six sides of the die. But our cognitive bias tells us to choose the second sequence because it's got a nice little mix. I don't know why I did that. It's got a nice little mix of red and green. Even though the first sequence is actually contained in the second one. Look at this. Red, green, red, red, red. That's sequence one. Red, green, red, red, red. That's also the last five throws of sequence two. Why would it be easier to add an additional throw to make the sequence more likely? It isn't. The more throws you make, the less likely you are to hit that exact sequence. Here's the math. We're just multiplying the odds. One third for red and two thirds for green. But check out the relative probabilities. Just one swap from red to green in sequence two doubles the probability of sequence three. And not requiring that extra green throw in sequence one makes it about 60% more likely to happen compared to sequence two. Do you see what's happening? Your brain is making you worse at math. The next time you're shopping and you see something that's $19.99, yeah, $20 sounds a lot more expensive even though it's just a one cent difference. But that 99 cents also anchors you into thinking about the price in an interval of pennies. So sales of whole dollars off seem more appealing. If a car's sticker price is $18,000 even, you might counter with 15,000 even. But a car at 17,800 anchors you into countering in hundreds, not thousands. See what they did there? Anchoring is actually a good thing. It's a first impression. We have to start somewhere if we're ever going to process any information in a meaningful or efficient way, but it can definitely lead you down the wrong path. And without recognizing what it is and what it isn't, you just have no hope of overcoming its effects. But here's the good news. By acknowledging anchoring bias, you're armed with the ability to choose how much weight to give it. You can stick with the good, accurate anchors that lead you down the right roads, and you can transcend those that otherwise would have caused you to get it really wrong. The truth is, depending on the question, the real right answer might still be floating around out there, waiting for someone, someone like you, to finally anchor it.